Jeff Jones from Greater Days Ahead, and I'm excited and thankful to be able to take part in the Red Oak Sturgeon Elementary School Understand Together Family Engagement Series. I'm excited about this because it gives me an opportunity to share with you about how to remain calm in even stressful situations. We all face them in every, various different areas of our life, stressful situations at home, and at school, or the playground, you know, the supermarket, wherever we at, we face stressful situations. So how do we deal with those stressful situations? Well, let me just share with you real quick a story, and then I'm gonna talk to you about some points. I remember one time, me and my friends, we like to go camping, right? And so we went to go camping in this forest area out in the woods. And before we went to go camping, we had to have first like a training session with one of the park rangers, a trail guide. And this trail guide was telling us all about all the safety things in the woods, you know, because you got to be able to be careful, you got to be mindful of the area and so forth. So as he was going through his training, he told us all about the safety of campfires, you know, putting out the fires after we're done with it, all the proper camping grounds, how to clean up after ourselves and so forth. Because he wanted to make sure, of course, we leave the forest just as beautiful and the woods just as nice as they were when we first got there, leaving the same when we left. So he gave us all the safety features and made sure we understand all the trails so that we wouldn't get lost, how to mark our trail, walk and uh, find our way back if we didn't you know, get lost, if we got lost and needed to backtrack or anything like that. So he went through all that. One of the most amazing things about the story though, was once he finished talking about all the safety features, all the things about campfires and the trails and all that, he said one thing for sure. He told me and my friend Craig, he said, Jeff Craig, be mindful of the bears that are out there. Bears are the most dangerous things out in the forest, out in these woods. So of course that got us attention because hey, no one wants to get attacked by a bear in the woods, would you? No, I didn't think so and neither would I. So. He began telling us all about the kinds of bears that were out there and he said the specific kind of bears that you had to watch out for. There were three in particular, but four in total. Uh, there's the brown bear, there's the mountain bear, and then there's the grizzly. So he told us all about each one of those. He said, now, each one of those, you have to uh, know how to handle yourself in those situations, each one, because each one is different. There's the brown bear. Now with the brown bears, he said, Brown bears are smart. They're the smart bears, so you can't really outsmart them. You have to just really understand how to just outmaneuver them. They're not the fastest, but they are smart. So you can't try and outsmart them, you just have to outmaneuver them. So if you see a brown bear, just remember, you know, and the brown bears, you know, they're, they're brown. So he said you'll be able to tell the difference just by that real quick. So he said, when you see a brown bear, try and make sure you outmaneuver them and don't try and outsmart them with any tricks or anything like that because they're very smart, they'll catch you. So he said, okay. And then the mountain bears, he says, the mountain bears, well, you know, they may look brown, but they're a little shorter. So you can tell the difference between a brown bear and a mountain bear because mountain bears are a little shorter, they're a little bit heavier. But what they like to do is they like to climb things. So if you're ever being chased by a mountain bear, don't climb anything because that's what they love to do. They can just climb, get right up there real quick. And so he says, if you're ever around a mountain bear, one of the things you want to do is stay low and stay calm. Because again, mountain bears, they're there. They can climb, but they're not fast. So, you know, you can kind of stay low with them and they're not going to be able to catch up to you because they're not fast. So that's the brown mountain bear. And then another bear is the grizzly bear. Now that's the biggest one of that's the biggest of all the bears, he said. You gotta be mindful of them, you gotta be watchful for them. Now with the grizzly bears, one of the things he says you have to be mindful about the grizzlies is that they're taller than the brown bear, that's how you can tell them the difference, and they're bigger than the mountain bear. So even though mountain bears are small, they're big, and even though brown bears, they're, they're like the medium size, but they're, you know, they're brown and they're not as tall as the grizzlies. Grizzlies are tall and big. So he said those are the ones you have to fear the most. Because they're smart, they know how to climb. But one thing about grizzlies is that they're not that smart. They're not that smart. You know, they, 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 they're not as smart in terms of the old expression is you just have to play like you're dead. Play like you're not moving to stand still, he said, really. That really works for grizzlies. Now for me, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You mean to tell me if I see this big old seven foot, 
bear coming at me, big as a house. You're telling me if I just stand still, nothing will happen to me? He said, yeah, Jeff, I mean, yeah, you know, even though, you know, they're, they're pretty smart and they're pretty fast and they can climb, but they're also, they're very peaceful. They're very peaceful. So if you just stay still, you know, expression you play like your dad, the grizzly bears, they really don't bother you. So me and my friend Craig, we was like, wow, that's, that's just amazing. So, so as we started our, our tr camping trip on the trails and hiking, we began to think about like, wow, what if, what if we see a brown bear? What if we see a mountain bear? What if we see a grizzly? We now know what to do, right? So we knew how to handle all those situations, right? Now, there's one last bear that he told us about. It's the panda. Now, we didn't think pandas were, you know, in that area, but he said, if you ever see a panda, watch out for a panda. And I was like, we were like, okay, we can understand the mountain bears. We can understand the grizzlies. We can understand uh, the brown bears, but a panda? He said, yeah, watch out for the pandas. And I'm gonna tell you why he said, us watch out for the pandas, but I'm gonna wait till a little bit later on as I talk to you right now to share with you why watch out for the pandas. But as I began thinking about the three bears that he shared us information with, that really began to let me know what I wanted to share with you about. Is that when you're looking at the situation with those three bears at the camper where the trail guy camper was telling us about, he told us about the brown bear. The brown bear, of course, was very smart, so you can't outmaneuver them. And he told us about the mountain bear. The mountain bears, they know how to climb, so you have to be mindful to just stay grounded and stay level. And he also told us about the grizzly bear who was big, strong, and smart. He told us how to really just be patient in those situations. So each one of those bears allows for us to understand what I'm going to call for my talk here with you today, the three R's. The three R's are very important. I know you're in school at Rose and you, all of you teachers and educators and staff always tell you about the three R's. But the three R's are a little bit same, a little bit different I'm going to talk to you today about based on those stories with the <laughs> three bears. <laughs> the three R's are knowing how to respond, knowing how to react, so that you can properly recover. And when you do those things, you'll be able to remain calm in any situation that you're facing. So the first thing is remember when we talked about the brown bears being very smart. Brown bears are very smart. So you have to know how to first respond in situations that's gonna really bring out the best in you. See now imagine you being chased by a brown bear. And like the, 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 the ranger told us, he said, you have to know that the brown bears are smart. So you have to know how to respond. When you're ever faced with a challenging situation, you have to know how to first respond to a situation. Knowing how to respond means you're able to clearly think through everything that you have to do to help yourself at that moment. A lot of times people don't know how to respond in certain situations and they begin to be fearful and they begin to, you know, overthink things. But being able to respond means that you understand the situation that you're in and knowing how to handle every opportunity that's in that moment. Now I want you to realize that responding we all can do. We all can respond to every situation. We can all be able to think through a situation. And it really, it really doesn't take a lot. It just takes one moment just to focus. Responding means that you're taking a moment just to focus on what you're faced up against. A lot of times life will challenge us and people won't be able to really focus on what they're up against. And that leads to them being frustrated. And when you're frustrated, you're not at your best. You can never remain calm when you're frustrated. You can never remain calm when you're frustrated. But when you allow yourself to focus, that brings out the best in all your thinking. Now, no matter how much many challenges we may have, young people, and I'm going to talk to young people first. Like, you may be in class trying to do a hard, real tough math problem. Nah. You may not like math. May not be your best subject. But if you just take a moment to focus everything that the teacher has been teaching you, everything that you have read in the books, every test problem that you've solved, if you take a moment to focus, 
you'll be able to respond. You'll get more of those answers right than you would ever believe. You may, you may get a grade that will really shock you. Just remain calm and focus. That will allow for you to thoroughly be able to respond to whatever you're faced with. And it also happens if you're dealing with your friends in the playground or dealing with your friends, you know, maybe, you know, or online or anything like that. And then they may say something or do something. And it may kind of make you want to feel like you want to, you know, Argh. but first, just focus. Understand what's being said, right? Understand, you know, that you have to learn how to first respond to that situation. Just focus and just remember. Do I really want to say what I was about to say? Do I really want to do what I was about to do? A lot of times people, they don't know how to respond because they haven't allowed themselves to focus. When you focus, you can bring out the best in you, but also when you focus, it allows you to remain calm. It also allows you to respond, but it also allows you to understand what happens next or what's called the consequences. When we learn how to remain calm, when we think things through, that means we're thinking about the consequences of what would happen. Because sometimes we can get mad in the playground or get upset with one of our friends. And we may want to, sometimes we may want to fight, which is not really a great way to handle situations. But if we remain calm and we think it through, we'll know how to really focus and understand what the consequences be. Every action has a reaction. And that reaction is what was often called the consequences. So we want to make sure we can stay calm, stay focused, so that we can learn how to respond to a situation. When we respond to a situation, that allows for us to think things through. Each one of us can think our way out of anything and think our way into anything. Think our way out of bad things. Think our way out of bad troubles. Think our way out of bad decisions. We can think our way out of that. If we just remain calm and focus and understand what would be some of the bad things that would happen if I did this or if I did that. We can focus to be able to see our way clearly through the situation. As we begin to focus again, that allows us to be able to respond and when we respond, we don't have to worry about that brown bear coming at us and not tricking us because we're focused and we're calm, we're responding. We can get away from the brown bear because brown bear, remember, is smart. And so too are you. So remember, first R is to respond. Respond, remain calm, focus, understand what you're into, and understand how you can get out of it and be the best that you can be. Respond. And the second one is to be able to, once you respond, then you can properly react. See, response is based upon us thinking through things and reacting is our ability to get out of things, our, our ability to understand how to work through things. See, we respond by thinking through, then we react by taking action. See, a lot of times people react first, they take action first, and they don't respond, they've never thought it through. But the first thing we should do is to respond so that we think it through, right? Then the second thing is that we react, we actually take action. Again, a lot of times people react first without responding and then it gets all messed up. Because when you take action at first without thinking through, it's more likely we're not doing things in a way that could be best. So respond first, but then react. Don't just respond and do nothing. Because if that brown bear is chasing you and you just respond and think things through and you don't react, well, that brown bear is still going to get you. <laughs> right? So respond, then react. React means we got to take action. So after you think things through, you understand the consequences, you understand some of the not so good things that could happen, then you can be able to better react and do those things that are right. Again, you're taking your math test. You don't really like math. Nah, it's getting on your nerves, right? You'd rather not. You'd rather just do something else. You have to do English, science, gym, physical education. You have to do something else. Play your video. But you have the math problem in front of you. So your first response, thinking it through, is to remain calm so that you can remember everything that the teachers have taught you. So that you can remember that the, the not so good consequence that will come if you don't do the math problem. So you remain calm, you respond, but then you have to react. And that reaction at that math test is to start to do the problem. One plus one will always be two. 
2 plus 2 will always be 4. 4 plus 4 will always be 8. Yeah, you get it. Remain calm, but then you gotta react. You have to take action. Anytime you respond to a situation, you have to take action to show that you understand what you're thinking about and what you're planning to do. So respond and then react. React is very important because again, a lot of times uh, as adults, we can get into situations where we just won't even react to it. We've responded because we thought it through and then we won't react. But if we don't react, then nothing happens. Nothing changes. Everything is the same. So reaction is to react, meaning to act into, take part in, understand you have an opportunity to do something great. Your reaction bring, always bring forth a positive result. React to that situation. Once you respond and you react, it always brings forth a positive result. It always does because you've thought through everything. You've allowed yourself to be in positions of uh, success. So you respond, remaining calm, but then you react, you take action. Now, understanding how to remain calm as you react is because you're not reacting out of frustration. You're not reacting out of fear. You're not reacting out of just emotion. You're reacting because you thought it through. So when you respond first and then react, it's always going to be clear. It's always going to be calm. And it's always going to be for your best success. So that's why, again, first you respond, then you react. And when you react again, it always brings about success. And remember going back to the mountain bear, mountain bear is able to climb, right? You gotta be able to react to the mountain bear, right? React means you gotta take some type of action. You gotta be able to take some type of action. You can't climb up some things. You can't climb up some things. You just gotta be able to be leveled about some things. You gotta react in the moment. And so that's why you have to do that. You have to react. And then, after you have responded and understanding the situation, you thought it through, you know your best options, you remain in calm so you can be focused. And when you're focused, you can then react to the situation, which means you can take action to be successful, to be victorious, to overcome any challenge, to not be able to get into fights or any trouble in school or at home or anything like that, because now you're reacting in a way that's more positive. And when you react, it's always a positive result. That allows for you then to be able to recover over any mistake or any challenge that you have to face. Because yes, there will be a lot of times, and in my life, in the life of your parents, your teachers, and anyone else, there will be a lot of times that we have just reacted first. And like I shared with you, when you react first without responding, that's always putting us to doing actions that are not best because we haven't thought it through. So a lot of times we've all reacted first. I remember when I was in eighth grade, this one guy got on my nerves. And I just couldn't take it anymore. And I knew, you know, he, he wasn't as big as I am. And I knew if I just boosh, punched him, he would, be, he would leave me alone. But also, could have had an opportunity to respond, just talk to him, because he wasn't as big as I was. But what did I do? You guessed it, yeah. I reacted first. And phew, I hit him. Now, I didn't hurt him much, but that doesn't matter because I shouldn't have hit him at all. And what was the result of my reaction first? Yeah, I got in trouble. Right? Had to go to detention. Right? Now again, I didn't cause any serious damage, but that wasn't the point. The point was I should have never hit him. I should have first responded and realized that this guy wasn't as big as I am. I could have told the teacher. I could have just remained calm and focused on my work. But no, I reacted first. And when we react first, what will happen is that we'll get put in detention in life. That means, see, what detention in life means that it will stop our progress from being all that we can until we have time to what? Respond and think. So I was in detention for a little while and it stopped me from progressing academically, stopped me from being the good person that I was and would become just for those moments, but it allowed me time to respond and think and focus and realize that my reaction first was not the best thing to do. So I'm just sharing that story with you to let you know that there's a lot of times when people respond, excuse me, when people react first instead of responding. You see, so when you respond, think things through, remain calm and focused, 
that allow for you to react with the most positive action that you need to be the best person that you can be. And then when you react, that allows you then to recover from any mistake or challenge that you face. Now I know with this understand together family engagement series, it's all about understanding how to cultivate calm in these stressful moments. In these stressful moments, a lot of times we're reacting to a lot of things. Because in these stressful moments, sometimes a lot comes at us. A lot comes at us in school, a lot comes at us at work, a lot comes at us at home. A lot comes at us all in our neighborhoods. And sometimes that can lead to, to, to what's called tension. And that tension just really boils up in our body. And sometimes it just makes us want to just react. And sometimes we do. And that, that's, that's a human thing to do. It's, it's, it's a normal thing to do. It's a normal thing to react at times. Even though, as I share with you, reacting isn't the best thing to do first. We should, we, should, we should put ourselves in a position to remain calm, focus, and think things through so we can respond. But a lot of times we do react first. Somebody calls you a name, we react and say something. Somebody, you know, pushes you, you react and push back. Right? Somebody, you know, does something and we re react first. We all do that. It's normal. I don't want you to think that because I said we have to respond first and you begin to think about everything that you didn't respond to and that you reacted that, oh my goodness, I made so many mistakes. No, no, no. We've all done that. We've all been there. We've all been to that space where we have reacted first. Man, I've reacted to a lot of stuff. You should see me when I'm driving. I, re I react a lot when I drive. But anyway, I shouldn't. I should respond first. But I'm sharing with you that, that we all react to certain situations that when we respond and then we react, that allows for us to understand that we can recover, which is the third R. So we have the first R, which is respond. Second R, which is we have to react. And then the third R lets us know we can recover. See, so from any situation where we have reacted first, we still have a chance to respond. Even though we may have reacted and done something or said something or, you know, caused something to happen that wasn't our best and wasn't our favorable self, if we realize after the reaction that there's still a better response, we can get to that third R and learn how to recover. Now, recovery may be a bit challenging based on what we have done. Because I know sometimes some of the things that I have done was a bit challenging for me to recover from. But know that you and I and everyone have the ability to recover from anything that we have reacted to. That's how we really cultivate calm in stressful situations is to know that we can recover from it. We can recover from whatever stressful situation is challenging us. We can recover from whatever stressful situation that we may have even caused. We can recover from every stressful situation that we may be thinking about. We can recover from that because we have the response ability, the ability to respond. Even after, even after we have reacted, we still have the response ability. And that's the greatest thing about it all is that because we have the response ability, we have the ability to recover from whatever thing we have reacted to. And the ability to recover means that we have, again, the ability to just refocus ourselves and say, hey, how do I make this situation right? How do I make it better? Recovery involves an apology sometimes. It involves saying, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Will you forgive me? Recovery means that we take a moment to reflect and then respond. Focus, think things through, remain calm to get through that situation. You see, that's what goes back to again, talking about the bears and the grizzly. We have to know how to actually get to a point where we can recover from that situation because the grizzly is big, he's tall, you know, 
He's fast, but what do we have to do? We have to learn how to recover from that situation because we can't react to it. If we react, we're in trouble. We can't respond, excuse me, if we, if we first didn't respond and we have to learn how to react, but now we can recover. We can recover if we just get to that space of saying, hey, I gotta realize, how can I be the best me? And we think about how we can be the best that we can. We can realize that making decisions while we're angry will never solve anything. It will never bring out the best in who we are. It never will. Making decisions while we're angry will never bring out the best in who we are. Now, I know that can be a bit challenging because there's been a lot of times, like I said, we may have already reacted to situations, but the recovery part is letting us know that we have a chance to respond again. Look at it in a better way. Look at it in a more positive way. There's always hope out of any situation that you may face. There's always the ability to overcome any challenge that you may have to face. And cultivating calm rem rem reminds me of the moments when in life we're challenged, it always brings out our best. In life we're challenged, it always brings out our best. You cultivate calm when you realize, I need to be my best in this moment. And, and, and the most amazing part about it is that when we're talking about cultivating calm and being our best, it's, it's only in that moment that we have to be our best. And if we continue to be best in every moment that we face, we can develop the character of being our best all the time. Moment by moment, just be our best. That's how we cultivate calm. And, and it all starts with being the three R's, learning how to respond, learning how to react, learning how to recover. A lot of times, again, people don't know how to recover from situations because they either think it was too bad, think it was too much of a mess up, think that they can't get out, can't make things right again. But you can, you can. And I know in our society, there's a lot of things that are challenging people, black people, brown people, people of color, people who have been disenfranchised, who've been hurt. And there's a need to recover. There's a need to recover the hope that everything is going to be fine. That all people can come together and understand how to work together. That there's hope for our future. That there's joy yet still out there. And even when people have reacted just off of their emotion, just off of their frustration, just off of their hurt, we can't look at them as being necessarily bad people because they reacted off of their emotions, off of their hurt, off of their pain. Because sometimes that pain for them was real. Sometimes that pain for them is, you know, something that we don't even understand. But we also have to realize that they too have a chance to recover and apologize and understand and grow. That's how we cultivate calm. Letting people grow into a space of understanding. Let people grow into a space of apologizing. Letting us grow into a space of understanding. Letting us grow into a space of apologizing. Those VRs are important. Responding, reacting, allowing us to recover. That's how we cultivate calm. And in any situation that you may face, in any challenge that you may be up against, if we learn how to take those three R's, put them in place, will be able to handle any situation and cultivate calm in our classrooms, in our neighborhoods, in our homes, to the adults in our workplaces, in our communities at large. Just respond to the situation that you're facing. Think about whatever it is that you're gonna be challenged with. How are you gonna respond? How are you gonna allow yourself to focus and think it through and just remain calm in those moments? Focus and think it through. Respond. And then when you respond, just then react to that. React in the best way that you can. React in a way that shows your best. Shows that you are able to understand the consequences that will become. But understand that you have to move forward at the same time. And then when you react, if there's a chance, Recover as well from any challenge that you have to face. 
So, as I close, I want to share with you about the fourth bear. I share with you the three, the three bears, right? The brown bear, the mountain bear, and the grizzly. And I told you how the camper told us about all of those, right? Then it was the fourth bear that he told us about. And this fourth bear was just very interesting because I did not think that this fourth bear was indigenous or part of that area, right? He was in a forest. It was like, really? This bear, part of this area? But he told us about the panda. He said, watch out for those pandas. Now, of course, we understood about the brown bear. He told us about that, right? We understand. And many of you know about James brown bears could be. But he told us about the mountain bear. Of course, we understand that. And of course, the big old grizzly. Everybody knows stories about grizzlies. But he said, watch out for the pandas. And me and my friend Craig, again, we were, we, we were, we were stunned like, pandas, really? But he said, yes, watch out for the pandas. And the reason why he said watch out for the pandas is because at any time, a panda bear could come up and just give you this warm, embracing hug to let you know that everything's going to be all right. And he said you have to watch out for that because as a panda comes up and gives you a hug and lets you know everything's all right, it may shock you and you may not be aware of it. And the reason why I wanted to share that with you is that just as we talked about responding, reacting, and recovering, just also remember, remember the hug of the panda. And remember that no matter what you're faced against, no matter what challenge you're up against, no matter what the situ may, what situation may be, everything's going to be all right. Remember the panda hug. It's going to be all right. And it'll come at times you may not realize it. You may have done something at home and your parents may be really upset at you because you may have really done something that wasn't pleasing to them. You may have done something at school and your teachers, you know, principal may be a little bit upset at you because it wasn't the best thing that you could have done. You may have done something to one of your friends. Again, they may be upset at you, right? And you may, you know, we all have done it. I have done it, and as adults, your parents, caretakers, guardians, they may have done something at work that their bosses may not like, right? But, like I said too, remember the hug of the panda. I'm letting you know that everything's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be fine. And that hug from the panda will allow for us to know that again, that's part of cultivating calm to be able to reflect and realize that everything's gonna be all right. Nothing is ever as bad as it seems. A lot of times people are in stressful situations and they can't remain calm because they reacted to a situation first and because they reacted to a situation first, they think that it's it and that things can never be good anymore and things are always gonna be bad, but no, remember the hug of the panda. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything always works out, it always does. So that's part of also cultivating calm, is to know that everything's gonna be all right. The moment we begin to keep thinking that things are gonna be worse, the moment that we keep thinking that things will never be better, the moment we begin to keep thinking that this is it, that's the moment when we get totally frustrated and we'll never be able to be calm because we'll be so upset that we messed up, we'll be so upset that this thing is bad, we'll be so upset. Ah. Remember to hug at a panda and to know that everything's going to be all right. Now, of course, when the trail guy told us that, he, he uh, didn't mention to us until we got back. And he asked us, he said, hey, you know, how many brown bears did you see? Uh, and actually, we saw one. He said, how many uh, mountain bears did you see? Uh, we saw two, actually. We kept our distance. We kept two safely. He said, how many grizzlies did you see? And, you know, we said, well, luckily, <laughs> we didn't see any grizzlies. And then he said, how many pandas did you see? And me and again, me and Craig looked at each other. We was like, well, actually, we didn't see any pandas. We didn't really expect that we would. The trail guy looked at us and he said, there actually aren't any pandas in that area. None at all. They're not part of this area. 
But I wanted you to know that no matter what you faced while you were out there, no matter what challenge that you were up against, no matter what situation you were in, whether you got lost on the trails or didn't do anything right, didn't do anything the right way, I wanted you to know that everything was going to be all right. That's why I told you about the hug of the panda, so that you will know that everything will be all right no matter what happens. And that's, he said, that's why I told you about the panda. And I told you about the panda last, so that you could remember that no matter where you go or what you do, just remember everything's going to be all right. And that's how you cultivate calm when you have that mindset to know that everything's going to be all right. So I'm Jeff Jones, I'm GDA consultant, sharing with you the three R's, but most importantly, about the panda and to know that everything's going to be all right. Stay excited. Peace and blessings.